All right, so we are now live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch at Extreme 104 SVG. And in studio right now, we've got our very own former WNBA star. Should I put basketball in there or it goes without saying? When I say WNBA. It stands for Women National Basketball Association. Right, right. So former WNBA star, Sancho Little. She's on the inside with us and we're going to be touching on her career what she's up to these days and maybe a bit of um, a personal side to Sancho. So welcome to Extreme FM. Welcome to the Wake Up Call. It's an absolute pleasure. Hello, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too shy. Don't be too shy, all right? Okay, lovely. So maybe we could start with um, a bit of who Sancho Little is. Um, I grew up in, in Paul Over. Kingston. Mm -hmm. I went to Kingston Prep, then to the girls' high school, and um, from there I went to the states. Mm -hmm. and that's been my life since. Yeah, yeah. How has it been living, like maybe culturally speaking? So in teenage years and your youth, SVG, and then going off to the US. Like culturally, how has that been for you? Um, I think my first year in, we went to Texas. Mm -hmm. um, it was three of us that left that same day and we all went to Texas. It was a culture shock mm -hmm. because growing up back then, when you watch movies about Texas, it was like Texas Walker Ranger, oh, always right. on a, <laughs> <It's true. laughs> always on a, you know, on a horse and a, you know, a feet, a plane, just riding about catching bad guys. And so mm -hmm. in our head, we, that's all we thought that we were going to see, mm -hmm. but the first I think we went there August and by October it was snowing. Oh. So it was a big culture shock, a big, like, it was so hard for us that first few six months, but we had sports, so that's all we did. Okay. Okay. Lovely. So tell us about Sancho at prep school. What was she like? Um, I, really, I can't remember. It just mm -hmm. school, running about sports and home for me. That's mm -hmm. all I remembered. My friends going to school and mm -hmm. running track mm -hmm. okay that's it so your sporting career would have essentially started at prep at prep school uh -huh. you said running a boat was yeah. it competitive running or just playing on um, the playing field the grammar school playing field there i i started when i was in when i was nine so that's what junior three i think mm -hmm. well that's what we call it so grade four yeah um then then is when i started running mm -hmm. and then i represented st vincent that's very same season and from that i fell in love with track okay uh -huh. that's wonderful though and that continued to high school so tell yes. us about your sporting career at ghs uh that was that was i think my best few years of running track because we went every summer we were never home you know we had to go to carifta games we had to go to win with island games we had to go all these it's from from april till maybe july we were never home because we had all these these countries to go to to represent st vincent and for me that was my summer that's what i hoped for when summer came so mm -hmm. for six years i did that so yeah and then netball too was added into it oh <laughs> Shooting the hoops. <laughs> no, I was I was a goalkeeper, goal defender, goalkeeper. Is it because of your height why they put you as goalkeeper? <laughs> <laughs> they said I wasn't accurate enough. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, that was my my best my best time in St. Vincent, just being with my friends, um, either in netball or running track. Okay, so off air there was mention of um, records. How many records did you break during your time? <laughs> like your track and field career uh, as i told you i'm not too sure i know i had a, a record for the 400 mm -hmm. um i had a record maybe for under 1500 mm -hmm. and maybe some field events yeah but i know some years back one of one somebody from high school broke the 100 meter record so i don't think i have that so were you were you short distance middle or long distance i ran everything up to the 800. okay so short and middle <laughs> you so, be like and really I, swift there. I mean they, they, we didn't have a lot of athletes then so you had to try everything until you find what fits and so that's what we did but when we went to represent st vincent i only ran the 400. okay so okay great great 
now i want to, to there's no mention of basketball anywhere there how did you move from track and field to netball to basketball um this guy sitting here wayne williams he i, I think he was starting his women's basketball program at the time and we were into netball and it was my last year of high school and i was dreading running track now and so you were tired I, of that <laughs> so i picked up um basketball and so happened the next year after that he found us some scholarships and we were out that is amazing and he's just sitting there in the background just <laughs> all calm and cool you know but there there is more to win than than meets the eye yeah when you want to say good morning to the folks of svg just pull the run, pull around the other the other one yeah while he adjusts his mic just just to say good morning all right good morning st vincent and the grenadines all right okay how long have you been in basketball okay let's hold on on that one there that one there as as sancho mentioned you identifying her talent and, and showing her an opportunity that's why i'm trying i'm kind of pulling you in right now so how long have you been in basketball i guess i started playing when i was about 15 16 years old then i got into coaching almost immediately because each one had to teach one mm -hmm. and that when I started basically coaching others then I left here in 1985-1986 attended university in Arkansas of all places <laughs> and for a short period of time in Japan so when I returned home I had a sense of what was possible because I also assisted the university basketball program. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that we have talent here that could play at the highest level, I started a coaching program and started using my network in the United States to secure scholarships. Mm -hmm. What was it about Sancho that stood out for you? Willing to stood on <laughs> and a hard worker, mm -hmm. very competitive. Even if we had her training with the guys, she took it to them. That's right, that's right, that's <laughs> right. And cl clearly, from knowing that she was new to the game, mm -hmm. but mentally, I knew once given the opportunity, she would excel. So it's just a matter of finding schools in the United States who will accept them and as she indicated, I think it was Sancho, Cheryl O'Dane, Vasha and Adams. Vasha Adams mm -hmm. who went off to Texas. And we tried to keep them in the group so at least they have each other to lean on because true. it could be challenging out there. Oh, true. Though my final question to you, as, as you're already at the microphone, um, watching Sancho now, how do you feel about her journey through basketball? Sounds um, like you're afraid to hear this response. <laughs> <laughs> He's never said anything like this to you. <laughs> I mean, clearly, I'm, I'm proud. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I think she, as all of leaders should do, and she is a leader, okay? She'll lay the foundation, the platform for others to try to follow. And she has shown what's possible. And she is giving back, and that's important. And she continued to give back even while at college because she came home a few times. I don't know if she wants me to say so. She used to sponsor the, 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 the girls' basketball pro, um, competition in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. And uh, that expertise and that know-how is always needed if you want to develop an organization and if you want to develop the, 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 the players. You know, so she's paying it forward, which, you know, we can't really ask some more mm -hmm. excellent role model mm -hmm. yeah how does that make you feel <laughs> <laughs> you're like blushing on it <laughs> okay that's wonderful thank you so much i think that was, that was that was pretty perfect now he mentioned you went to university what was it like 
Let's talk about some of the, the, the ups and downs, the challenges and your successes throughout your, your basketball career or, or university, wherever that, that high or that low happened. Um, when, when I went, I saw it as an opportunity to learn. Mm -hmm. That's it. Basketball wasn't my main focus mm -hmm. back then mm -hmm. because I was new to the game. It was just learn, get your education, and maybe come back home with a degree. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you just plan to spend like four years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> just get the degree and come back. But as I learned the game more and more and more, I saw opportunities for myself. Mm -hmm. And knowing that when I got to the States, I was fresh, like new. I couldn't dribble. I couldn't really shoot. I, all I did was run and rebound. Mm -hmm. And that's what the coach wanted at the time. Mm -hmm. But as years passed, different coaches wanted different things. So I had to learn quickly. Mm -hmm. And as that happened and I saw that I could actually improve, my intentions changed. So at my, four, at my fourth year up there, the coach came to me and he said, I think you could make it to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no way, because I've only been playing pro, um, basketball really for four years, like mm -hmm. organized one and one everyday basketball. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, you could make it. And I need for you to keep that in mind. I really you brushed <laughs> it off at that point. I can see that. <laughs> I like, really, oh, what is he talking about? Yeah, because the WNBA was there, but to me, I was growing up, it was track. All I did was watch track. And when I got the opportunity to play basketball, all I thought was get your education and go back home. Mm -hmm. And he came and he's like, no, you have improved enough that I think that you can make it this far. And I was like, but if I make it, how long am I going to be there? Because I know nothing really of basketball. These people have been playing since they were 10, five years old. Mm -hmm. I've been playing since I was 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And so the time came and they told me that I needed to go to the um, to New York for the draft. I was like, okay, but they didn't tell us where we're going to be placed, or who's going to pick us or anything. We just need to be dressed up, sit in a room and wait for a name to be called. Mm -hmm. So we went in there and so happened I was the fifth pick of that draft. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me I'm better than these people who've been playing for this long. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I said to myself, I need to learn. I learn quick because once I hit that door the first day in training camp to play with these professionals, I'm going to be swallowed whole. Because I, as I said, I didn't really know basketball like that. Mm -hmm. And so I got there and I just picked up and I learned. And over the years, I've added stuff, taken away stuff and just improved. Mm -hmm. What has been the most challenging thing for you in your basketball career? Injuries. Injuries and I, I, I always said that if I had learned the, the fundamentals earlier, like at age 9, 10, that I would have been a better player at 20 years old. Because me at 20 years old is somebody at 15 mm -hmm. or somebody at 13. And me at 30 is somebody who's in their prime at 25. Mm -hmm. So if I had learned it earlier and if I hadn't had these injuries, these setbacks that I had where I had to stay out for six months at a time, then that time I could have been, um, been, have been doing something to improve either how to move the basketball a little bit quicker, how to get to my favorite spot a little bit quicker or something like that. But I had to be disabled. Mm -hmm. So I think not learning it a bit faster, uh, practicing earlier in age and injuries is what was my hardest. Mm. Have you ever felt intimidated by any other player, whether it be male or female? Or like maybe starting out, you just felt like, is no. this my place? <laughs> Not really. I've, as I told you, when we first got there, we didn't know. So we had to learn. That is why the intimidation never got there. Because in my head, as much as you know, I'm going to get there. Because mm -hmm. I think when people go in places thinking that I already know something, they get intimidated by people who already do that thing mm -hmm. because you really don't know it. And so when they come to you and be like, do you know this? And you have to fake it. You, you lose your space. But I didn't know. So I had to soak it up. Whatever they tell me, either I use it, I reuse it or I lose it. 
And so some things I kept and some things I said I can't use. So I always was getting better without feeling like you're trying to pressure me. Mm -hmm. That's that's really cool. Now, let's talk a bit about support system. You seem to have a very strong mind and real super focused. Who have been with you, whether it be from the beginning, in the middle, closer to the end, because you're no longer in the WNBA. Mm -hmm. You're no longer very active with basketball. Mm -hmm. Who has been your support system? Who are your people? Well, when I was here, it was way, well, my parents, my mom, my family home, my grandparents and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I left, it was Wayne because he was the one that we had contact with. And so back then we didn't have no social media. We didn't have WhatsApp where you could call home every day. Right. You had to go buy a phone card and be like, mama, I'm feeling sad, you know? And so my mom always told me if you start something, you finish it. So that is what I always do. If I start something, I'm going to try at least finish it. Um, when I got to the States, it was the coach. Uh, um, and then when I got to my second um, college, it was my teammates. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I'm still friends with one of my teammates, like close friends with um, Amanda Barksdale, who came with me now and helped me with Wayne's um, program. So, um, and then overseas and in the, in the WNBA, you, you kind of find friends when you play on teams, but then you lose them as you go along because your interests are not the same anymore. Your interest is only the same when you with them for the time being. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of that saying, people come into your life for a reason, season or a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I mean, probably fit into that season. There's some people who stayed for a lifetime. Right. Really nice. Now, you're very tall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you, you Six said... Six foot five. <laughs> four. Four? Yeah. Okay, well, maybe the, the other the, thing is the, wrong. No, the, when you play sports and stuff, they give you that inch in your shoes. <laughs> oh. So if you're flat-footed, you, when, you when you have doctor height, you'll be 6'4". When you have sports height, they you measure in your shoes. Oh. So then I become 6'4 and 3 quarter, 6'5". Oh, interesting. <clears throat> so you're very tall. Yes. Has that been... Up outside of basketball, has that been an issue for you? Uh, has it ever been an issue for you? Not, not really. Um, when you're around basketball people, I'm not that tall. I'm not. I'm not. You're like tall. literally saying <laughs> eye to eye with everybody. <laughs> you're not that tall when you with the people that that you play the sport with. There's some shorter people, but majority of the people um, are taller. I've played with people. Everybody's uh, Lana says everybody's back to average height. Yes, and I've played with girls who six seven six eight. You mean taller than you? Yes, and when I started playing, I thought I was tall until I got to the WNBA and be like, whoa! Okay. So I had to change positions mm. because I was never now never the tallest person. So I had to go from playing the the post player to being a power forward. Mm -hmm. So the small of the post players that could be outside, inside, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's never been a problem around sports people. Mm -hmm. Like regular folks now, I'm one of the tallest. Like when oh, I yes. came home, all my friends. <laughs> like, <I said. laughs> like when I take pictures with my friends, I'm like, wow. Do they have to stand for like a <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna sit. <laughs> We're gonna sit and take a break. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so maybe um, for, for men, men who are shorter than you, outside of professional mm -hmm. um, scope, have, they, have you ever encountered anybody who was intimidated by your height and didn't want to talk to you because you're really tall? Um. As I say, I left when I was 17, so mm -hmm. I can't really account for St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. And for everybody else in the States, they've seen tall women all the time. So, oh. so they're like a cousin. It's like, oh. It's whatever. Once you got a good personality, they don't care. Okay. Well, so. that, that, is, that is a difference. <laughs> that is a difference right there. Now, let's touch on gender differences in basketball. Mm -hmm. Female basketball, women's basketball, is not as popular as male basketball in SVG. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that either changing in the future, or, or what words of encouragement would you give to the females who are interested in basketball right now? 
Uh, I think because the program hasn't um, bloomed the way that we all expected it to bloom, it's mm -hmm. it's it's not susceptible for the the females to come out. But male always into sports. They into soccer. They into all different stuff. Basketball, I thought back then would have been um, accepted by everybody, females in the female realm per se. But it died down. Mm. After some years, it kind of died down because of whatever stigma it is. Mm -hmm. um, the guys still played. Some females go and play with the guys, but they never made their own part to making their own group you know so whether it be 15 females play against 15 males they never did that mm -hmm. they just two made two females go with 15 males and make a group or just then lack of support and stuff that they just discounted and said it's not for them hmm. and the program you're talking to is the sunshine basketball academy um, whether it's, I don't know whose program, just any program for mm -hmm. females. Mm -hmm. It, it's, it didn't bloom the way that I hoped it was supposed to bloom mm -hmm. because as you say, this radio program probably going to put me in a spotlight for what today, mm -hmm. but not a lot of people going to pick up basketball tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They're going to hear about me and my story, but if there's nothing for them to see, nothing for them to do they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's not enough facilities in, in areas for basketball. And even if there are, they're used for different things. And so you can go and play with your friends on a half of a soccer field. You can go and play with your friends on the beach for soccer. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that for basketball. You actually need some place to go. And that is not everywhere in St. Vincent or access, accessible to everybody. And if the females can do it, um, there is not that sometimes the males are already on the court. So either we need two courts in some areas so that different people could use it or mm -hmm. somebody need to monitor it where if a girl's team need to practice that they have time. Mm -hmm. I just got to roll up and say, guys, it's our time. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you know, you've been here for like centuries. <laughs> So somebody wants to ask you, where have you traveled to in your basketball career? I started out in Spain, in Ibiza. For Ibiza? Three, yeah. Oh, but, oh <laughs> hablo español? Un poco. Un poco del español. <laughs> Buenos días, Sancho. Uh, I don't know anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, I played in, in Ibiza for three years, and then Salamanca for two, and um, Valencia one year. That is in Spain. And um, then I went to Turkey for three years and Russia for two years. You were in Russia? Mm hmm That's cool. I mean, all the countries are cool, but, but culturally, which one is you gravitated to more? Spain. Spain. Hispania. Yeah. But the, so the, it's, I would say because basketball in Spain is, or the people in Spain are... For sports mm. well europe in general mm. but for spain i liked it because their culture is calm mm. you know when i went to turkey it's it's rowdy it's <laughs> if they're just losing they're going to be a chair flying they're going to be some pop rocks on the court they're going to be at rowdiness in, in turkey and in russia they're more like basketball when, when I played there, it's it's a big sport. Where I played, it was a small community. So on Sundays or on Wednesdays when we played, it was like everybody was in the gym. Mm -hmm. That's all they did was mm -hmm. basketball and hockey. And so when it was basketball time, everybody was there. When it was hockey, everybody was there. Mm -hmm. But they sat and watched basketball. It was no jumping up. There was no a little bit of clapping, mm -hmm. but there, it was calm basketball there. So it's almost like how people would watch tennis. Yes. They and just... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was too cold, they can't move. Oh. But <laughs> but it there was there was calm in Russia. It was too rowdy in Turkey. And it was good sportsmanship in Spain. Okay. 
Reminds me of the story of the three bears. <laughs> <laughs> and the porridge. Yeah. It's too hot, too cold, and just in the middle. So you're no longer professionally playing basketball. What are you up to these days? Well, I retired at the end of the 2019 season. And I was supposed to go and coach back in the WNBA in the 2020 season. But then COVID hit. And so I opted not to go. Because they, it wasn't sure where we were going to play, if there was going to be a season. So it prolonged until maybe halfway through June and they found the place and it was going to be a tight knit place and everybody's going to be in the same hotel and everything else. And they were going to play all the games in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I opted not to go. Mm -hmm. And so 2021, um, the opportunity wasn't there anymore, which was fine because now I had to decide what I actually wanted to do. So I went and I, um, I um, subbed at a school for children with learning disabilities. And then I interned at a, a college for basketball to see if either or will fit. And so I, I like coaching, but at the time I was like, I don't want to do all this traveling right now. Mm. I've done traveling for 20 years. Mm. So I want to just be able to be put for a while and then I'll make that decision again later. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going back now next week. Well, I'm leaving tomorrow, but next week I start at the school with the learning, with the kids with the learning disability. Mm -hmm. Safe journeys. So there is no settling per se <coughs> with Sancho Little. You're still in it. Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes I try to pick up a ball and shoot some hoops, but when I'm done, I'm like, okay, I need an ice bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I see you you are assisting Wayne in the summer program. How has that been going? It was fine. Um, I, I wish there was more girls that actually thought that they should learn the sport. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, the way it's, it, for next time that I come, I want it to be announced a bit earlier so people could have in their mind, okay, at this mm -hmm. certain time, I'm going to be here, I'm going to learn, and I'm going to do what it takes because even though it was two weeks, two weeks? Yes, it was spontaneous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> it was two weeks. I think that learning basketball needs more time because when you first come and you don't know anything, you have to kind of learn quick and two weeks is not enough time for you to have something in your mind to tell you, okay, I really like this sport because the mm -hmm. first two weeks you're going to hate, you're going to hate it because you have to learn something. Mm -hmm. And then as you progress, you're like, okay, this is easier and easier and i kind of like it so you keep coming back mm -hmm. but the first week week and a half you're like i don't want to be dribbling every day <laughs> i don't want to be running up and down the court trying to make sure this ball stick next to me mm -hmm. i don't want to try to shoot my arm hurt you know mm -hmm. so after a while you need more time in the gym um to actually know if you like the sport or not okay it sounds like what could work if you have a tailored program maybe a 15 week or something something mm -hmm. that's longer that is suited because yeah. i don't know anything about basketball but <laughs> the guys running up and down the ladies running up and down and they're shooting hoops but i'll be a little bit biased if it were like female centered because you it, know it's... it was wayne's program was female centered mm -hmm. some people now i'm talking about the 15 week the longer yeah, one yeah yeah so it was supposed to be female centered but some of the girls brought their brothers with them because you know it's summertime <laughs> the parents send them together yeah. so they just joined too yeah. lucy go and john go too <laughs> <laughs> so it was fine too but um since now that i can come home in the summers because that's when the wmb was in the summers mm. so i couldn't come in the summer so i used to come in the break between when the wmb finished and before i went overseas mm -hmm. so that was a two weeks and I always came and helped Wayne with the camps when I did come home. But now that the summer, summers are open now, mm -hmm. maybe I'll come home if I don't get a job back in the WNBA. <laughs> um, yeah. Come home in the summers and have a longer program just to... Because when you, when you have a longer program, you'll be able to weed out who, who actually is learning and what need, they need more to learn. 
Okay, nice. When you wanted to say something? Yes, um, the Sunshine Basketball Academy, we're focusing on developing the women's basketball program. Mm -hmm. There are other academies that have other focus and it's going to be an ongoing program. So when Sancho come, then it's going to be at another level. So we'll have more persons who are more aware of what the game is and how to play, understand the rudiments of the game. So Sancho's presence at that point is to lift them in a more intensive program for that period of time. Okay, very nice, very nice. So we're going to wrap things up. We see Jamali saying, welcome home, Sancho. So welcome home when you're just about to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jamali. Um, so, so we're going to wrap up, but my final, final question, or maybe I have um, one or two more, is where do you um, particularly see yourself? Well, I have two more. Do you have, um, like maybe in the next five years, this is where you want to see basketball, a female basketball in SVG. What is your vision for women in basketball for SVG? I want to see them have the same opportunities I had. Mm -hmm. I was fresh, I was young, I didn't know what I was doing and it could be the same for them. You just have to have the opportunity and the willingness. If I come back and I don't see the willingness in people, I can't send you out. I can't look for stuff for you. Wayne can't look for stuff for you. Mm -hmm. So as Wayne said, I had the willingness. And so I got my opportunity. But when you come and you don't see that willingness to people to actually improve, you can't put your name to it. Mm -hmm. Because then when it, when it goes out, it's going to be a bad product. Mm -hmm. So my hope for ba women's basketball in St. Vincent is that even though that you don't know the sport and you want to learn the sport, it's your willingness to learn to improve, to just get better, because you never know where that opportunity will take you. That's true. And you kind of touched on the response to my next question. For the, whether it's female or male who's listening, who might be a little bit confused as to what they want to do, whether it's sports or maybe we can be specific in sports. Um, what words of advice do you have for that individual who just needs that needs that extra push know what you want you have mm -hmm. to know what you want not at the specific time mm -hmm. but a goal that you're trying to get to as i say when i first went there i wanted to get my degree and come back home mm -hmm. but something else was in the way and i had to improve in that and as i improved my opportunities grew and it took me all the way to Europe and back and I never as they say when you do what you love you never work a day in your life mm -hmm. and that is what happened I fell in love with basketball to the point where I never felt like I was working until the late end when I woke up in the mornings and I was like oh I'm in so much pain do I have to go Mm -hmm. You know, that is when I re um, realized I have, it's, it's up for me. It's, it's time. So back when I was young and a spring chicken, as they say, <laughs> I could have been on a plane Monday, played Tuesday, back on a plane Wednesday and played Friday. Mm -hmm. But then as I got older, it was like, oh my God, playing again, mm -hmm. another hotel, I can't do this anymore. And so it was time. Was so, you have, so you have to have an end goal for yourself. It's, it, even though it's not sports, even though it's being whatever you want to be, there should be an end goal to say, I have to improve in whatever I have to improve in to get to where I need to be. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to say, now is my time to... Actually not. I woke up one morning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up one morning and my legs wouldn't move. Not literally wouldn't move, but I was dreading getting in my car and go into the gym i was in i wasn't in pain but i was like not this again and so at the end of the season I had, when i went to speak to the coaches and the administration i said this is it and they're like when you made a decision i said maybe like three weeks ago mm -hmm. but i needed to finish my last day and so this is it and i you walked just... out and that was it any regrets no 
No. People mm. always ask me if I miss playing basketball. No, I don't miss playing basketball. I miss competition. Oh, I see that coming <laughs> over there. You see how she said that? I miss the competition. Yeah, I miss I miss the competition. I I mean I don't really if I could play without the practicing and the waking up and the flying and all this stuff, I'll do it. But because you have to go through that. Mm -hmm. It's it's over for me. Okay. All right. So oh that's it for me. Do you have any other final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Uh no. I um I just want to see things get rolling. People are bouncing. Yeah. <laughs> um, people more um, receptive to females playing basketball. I know in, it's even in America, it's not as, you know, big. It is big, but it's not as big. Mm -hmm. In Europe, it's huge. It's, it's, and I, as I told some of the campers, everything is not in America. Everything is not in the States. And if, if that is where you want to go in, in sports, there's more opportunities overseas. There's more teams. There's more countries. There's more of everything over there. Mm -hmm. But because we only see the States that we gravitate there. But opportunities are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Lovely. All right. Thank you so much, Sancho, for stopping in and taking the time and sharing so much. All the best in your future endeavors. And thank you so much, Wayne. For making the link and adding your your few cents well a few two cents <laughs> in between all right so we're gonna wrap that up right now mm -hmm.